السلام علیکم ویوس ویلکم ٹو سیاست انگلش نیوز آئی ایم ایمن عمر تلنگانہ چیف منسٹر کے چندر شیکھر راؤ آن منڈے ٹیسٹڈ پازیٹیو فار کووڈ نائنٹین سو سے سیڈ ہی از کرنٹلی ایڈوائز آئسولیشن اینڈ از اسٹینگ ایٹ از فارم ہاؤس ان ایرا ویلی گجویل آ نوٹ دیٹ ان فارم ہز کنٹریکشن سیڈ دیٹ اے ٹیم آف ڈاکٹرز از کرنٹلی مانیٹرنگ ہز ہیلتھ افیشیل کنفرمیشن فرام دا چیف منسٹرز آفس از اویٹیڈ بی جے پی جنرل سیکرٹری آف آندھرا پردیش وشنو وردھن ریڈی آلسو ٹک ٹو از ٹویٹر اینڈ وش دا چیف منسٹر اسپیڈی ریکوری تلنگانہ ہائی کورٹ آن منڈے ایکسپریس ڈس اپوائنٹمنٹ اوور دا اسٹیٹ گورمنٹس ریسپانس ٹو پبلک انٹرسٹ لیٹیگیشن پٹیشنس ریلیٹڈ ٹو کووڈ نائنٹین اے بینچ کنسسٹنگ آف ہائی کورٹ چیف جسٹس ہیما کھولی اینڈ جسٹس وجے سین ریڈی ریپریمانڈیڈ اف دا اسٹیٹ واز کنٹینڈنگ فار دا پوزیشن آف کووڈ نائنٹین ٹاپر ان دا کنٹری We are very unhappy with your affidavit as it does not contain any of the details like measures to check footfall in cinema halls and other public places, the bench said, as quoted by the Hindu newspaper. The bench expressed displeasure over Advocate General B.S. Prasad comments that the state government is all geared up and is following central government's guidelines on COVID-19, and pointed out that the center had asked states to formulate their own guidelines on the issue. The bench sought specific circulars to check footfalls at cinema halls, banquet halls, malls and public places amid rising infections in the state. Justice Reddy also asked the AG if the government had any problem in restricting the number of people thronging pubs and bars. The 3,000 public toilets constructed by the GHMC in Hyderabad are in a bad shape. The Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation officials have failed to appoint any agency to maintain these toilets. A visit to about five dozen public toilets at various areas of the city revealed how filthy and stinking these toilets are. Most of these defunct toilet structures with its doors stolen become garbage dumping grounds. Its interior suffered irreparable damage. There is no water supply or drainage connection to these toilets. A signboard declaring under construction is displayed on these structures even though their construction work has been completed much earlier. It is obvious that some mischievous elements vandalize these structures. The State Minister for Municipal Administration and Urban Development, K.T. Ramarao, has severely criticized the municipal officials for spoiling city's image, but still no action has been taken by the GHMC. The State Home Minister, Mohammad Mahmood Ali, inaugurated the Telangana Fire Riot 2021, organized by Fire Service Department at People's Plaza. Speaking on the occasion, the minister said that the disaster response and fire services in Telangana state is exemplary. The Home Minister said that the fire brigade staff saved human lives and property in major fire incidents in the state. Mehmood Ali said that on 14th of April 1944, a fire broke out in a British warship at Mumbai port in which 66 firemen and officers were killed. The occasion is commemorated in the country every year on 14th of April as Fire Brigade Day. The program will continue till 20th of April during which the fire brigade will present a number of programs to create public awareness regarding fire safety and prevention of fire incidents. The Home Minister said that the Telangana state is progressing rapidly under the leadership of Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao. There were 97 fire engine centers in the state before the formation of Telangana and 20 new centers are added since its formation. The state's fire department imparts best training to its staff and uses state-of-the-art appliances for fire fighting. The Andhra Pradesh government has fixed a new timeline of 100 days for concluding disciplinary proceedings by all government departments against the officials who are caught red-handed by the Anti-Corruption Bureau. Earlier, there was no fixed timeline for taking disciplinary action against corrupt officials. A committee of officers consisting of the Chief Commissioner of Land Administration, Principal Secretary to Government, Village and Ward Secretariat and Village and Ward Volunteers and District General ACB, after a thorough study of the subject, recommended a revised timeline for early completion of the disciplinary proceedings without diluting the principles of natural justice and fair play, said an official statement. It added that disciplinary proceedings should be conducted simultaneously with the criminal proceeding and it should not wait for the outcome of the criminal proceedings. As Telangana is witnessing a surge in COVID-19 cases for the past few days, Nomaish in Hyderabad is likely to be on hold indefinitely. Even the deposits collected from the stall holders have been returned. According to a report published in the Times of India, the All India Industrial Exhibition Society Secretary Dr. B. Prabhashankar said that as per the Managing Committee's decision, the deposit amounts of the stall holders have been returned. 
A member of the AIIE society said that it has become very difficult to organize the nomaish as the number of COVID-19 cases has spiked up in the state. Stallholders were also not happy over the inordinate delay in the exhibition, he said. Earlier, as per the regular procedure, AIIE society had invited applications from stallholders and allotted land on the nomaish ground. However, due to surge in COVID-19 cases, it was put on hold. Stallholders were demanding the return of the deposit amounts as many of them had taken it as loan from the banks or private finance companies or individuals. Telangana reported 4,009 fresh COVID-19 cases pushing the tally to over 3.55 lakh while the death toll rose to 1,838 with 14 more deaths, the state government said on Monday. The Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation accounted for the most number of cases with 705, followed by Medkat Malkazguri 363 cases and 360 cases in Nizamabad respectively. The total number of cumulative cases stood at 3,55,433, while with 1,878 patients being cured, the total recoveries were at 3,14,441. The state has 39,154 active cases and over 83 lakh samples were tested on Sunday. Cumulatively, over 1.18 crore samples have been tested. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has cancelled his planned visit to India next week due to the coronavirus situation in the country, Downing Street said on Monday. Boris Johnson will instead speak to Prime Minister Narendra Modi later this month to launch their plans for the future UK-India partnership with their physical meeting expected later in the year. In the light of the current coronavirus situation, Prime Minister Johnson will not be able to travel to India next week. Instead, Prime Minister Modi and Johnson will speak later this month to agree and launch their ambitious plan for the future partnership between the UK and India. They will remain in regular contact beyond this and look forward to meeting in person later this year, the statement said. Pressure had been mounting on Johnson to call off the visit amid growing concerns of a new variant of COVID-19 detected in the country. Over the weekend, UK Opposition Labour Party joined calls for him to conduct the discussions remotely via Zoom and cancel the physical visit, which had already been shortened to focus on a day-long packed schedule on 26th of April. South actress Samantha, who is known for her generosity, runs her own NGO, Pratushya Support, which caters to meet the necessities of poor women and underprivileged children. She often wins heart for being golden-hearted as she often goes out of her way to help the needy. She has now once again won hearts. As per a report, Samantha came out in support of a female auto driver named Kavita and gifted her an expensive car worth 12.5 lakh rupees to help her start her own cab service. Reportedly, Kavita had visited the sets of Samantha's talk show earlier this year where she had with revealed that she was a victim of domestic violence. By driving an auto from Mayapur to Bachupalli, she has been taking care of her seven sister too after their parents' passing. Seeing as how she has been struggling to make ends meet, Samantha had then promised to help Kavita in her best possible way. Samantha's fans and admirers are head over heels over her kind gesture and can't help but laud about it on social media. Indian wrestler Deepak Punia settled for silver on the final day of the Asian Wrestling Championships after losing 10-0 to Iranian Olympic champion Hassan Yazdani Sharati on Sunday, while Sanjeet won bronze. India thus ended the Asian Championships with seven medals in the men's freestyle event. Deepak lost his first-round boot inside the first period by technical superiority as he was hardly able to hold his defense against Yazdani Sharati's flurry of attacks. Sanjeet, meanwhile, almost blew away a comfortable lead against Rostam Shodev of Uzbekistan. Sanjeet was leading 11-2 at one stage, but Shodev clawed his way back. The Indian managed to hold on to his lead until the end of the boot. India have thus finished runner-ups to Iran in the freestyle event of the Asian Championship. Indian origin billionaire brothers Mohsin and Zubair Issa have acquired a popular British fast food chain Lyon as part of what they described as a goal to grow their food service operations in Britain. The Issa brothers, whose parents moved to the United Kingdom from Gujarat in the 1970s, owned the Euro garages chain of petrol stations as part of the EG Group business. Last year, they acquired leading UK supermarket chain Asda from US owners Walmart as part of the strategy to expand their non fuel business. Leon, founded by John Winson, Henry Dimbleby, and chef Allegra McEvedy in 2004, pitches itself in the category of naturally fast food with a focus on creating a healthy menu that tastes good in a sustainable way. 
The acquisition is said to be worth an estimated 100 million pounds. With an extensive network of over 70 restaurants, Lyon has 42 company-owned restaurants operated on leasehold locations with a strong presence in London as well as other large cities across the UK. That's it for today. Thank you viewers.